Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is one of the most exciting videos I'm going to have done in a long, long time. This is the Ford Maverick, and one thing you need to know about me is I used to have a career promoting Hyundai products, and I'm free from the necessity to promote Hyundai products, but I want to talk to you really briefly about the Santa Cruz and why I think it's a great vehicle and why I think this absolutely deserves to outsell it. So first of all, really quick background, full disclosure. I used to be very involved with Hyundai products, like we said. I drove a pre-production Hyundai Santa Cruz. That's what caused me to actually buy a Santa Cruz. I bought a Santa Cruz, I talked about it. In fact, here's a picture of the one I bought right there. It was an absolutely great vehicle for me, and you could make the case that that is a better vehicle than this, but this one absolutely deserves to outsell it. So again, not only have I bought one, owned it, I used to be considered an expert on the vehicle. I also have talked to the designer of it. I still somewhat keep in touch with him. He's a great guy. I think he did a fantastic job, but this deserves to outsell it. So why, what am I talking about? Well, first of all, this answers a question that a lot of people had been asking, where the Santa Cruz answers a question that almost nobody was asking. And that is a key difference. Understanding that when your marketing fits with who you are as a company and you develop a product based on what your customers want and what they need, that is a key to a winning product. And this is a great product. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what's good about this, what's not great about this, how it compares to the Santa Cruz, and I'm gonna be real blunt and honest because I don't have to promote one product or the other. And I'm gonna talk about what it would take for me to buy this vehicle because it's not quite there yet. Really quick, I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals is known as Canada's huggable car dealer. If you're interested in a vehicle, they will absolutely take care of you. They can take care of you if you want the Ford, if you want the Hyundai, if you want any other brand. They are amazing and they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. So if you have questions about a vehicle that you want to have an answer to, make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments, especially if I miss something on here that you want to know about more. Let me know in the comments what you want to know and I will answer your comments both in the comment section and in future videos. All right, let's get going with this review. So I've spent most of my career, the better part of 20 years in marketing and in vehicles and other things I've been involved with for a very long time. And one of the key things to understand when you're making a product is what do your customers want or what do customers want? So let's talk about the question of what everybody was asking for and what nobody was asking for. Nobody was asking for the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, let me be fair. A lot of people saw it in a previous uh, you know, auto show and they thought it looked pretty cool, but nobody was really asking for a fairly sporty crossover with great luxury features with a small bed on the back. Very few people were asking for that. Now I'll tell you, it is absolutely one of the best vehicles I've ever owned. I love the luxury features. I love the luxury ride. I love the way it handled. I love the power. There was a lot to like about that vehicle, but very few people are like me and we're asking for that. What a lot of people were asking for is a truck, a good, honest truck that is back to basics, that gives me good fuel efficiency. It's not super expensive to own. It's simple. I don't want a whole bunch of frills. I just want a smaller, simpler truck because trucks have gotten more expensive. They've gotten uh, more expensive to fuel. They've gotten more, uh, larger and in some cases too big for what most people need. And that is the question that Ford answered brilliantly with this. And when we talk about some of the features in here, you're gonna see some of those marketing type differences that were made, decisions that were made, not just vehicles made, now go market it, but right as the process of this vehicle is being made. And that's why this vehicle is awesome and absolutely deserves to be the best seller. So let's start talking about some of the features in depth here. If you're still tuned in with us, go, sell, go grab yourself a drink, go grab yourself a snack. We're gonna go through this in detail. It's gonna be a little longer video, but I think you'll see things you're not seeing in other videos. Let's get going. So one of the things that Ford did brilliantly is they made a desirable lower trim level vehicle, which is not what manufacturers are very good at doing. This is the XL model. Now the XL model of the Maverick includes a lot of different options. The real big thing is the XL was available in a hybrid engined vehicle, which means you not only spend less to buy it because they priced it very competitively, but you also spend less to fuel it. Now, what they didn't do that everybody wants them to do is they wanna make that hybrid and all wheel drive model. This one is the all wheel drive model and therefore it's not the hybrid. However, when you don't go with the hybrid, you get a traditional transmission that allows you to tow up to 4,000 pounds when you get the tow package, which we'll talk about in this because there's some really key 
key important pieces to that tow package that makes sense, especially when you compare it to the Santa Cruz. And overall, they gave it a basic truck look. They didn't go with anything too crazy. I think it's handsome. I don't think it's overly futuristic, but I think it works for what it is. A couple features that I like in here, you've got LED lighting up front, so you've got the nice white LED lighting. Pretty basic squared off look that works. You've got a little uh, thing looking forward here, which gives you the, some of the safety features. Camera looking forward gives you some of the safety features like uh, forward collision avoidance. So you've got all the safety that you need in a small vehicle, but now you have a small vehicle with a bed. Let's go talk about that bed before we work into the back seat and front seat and talk about all of the unique features that make this deserving of its bestseller status. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here because a lot of people say, oh, it's just a bed. It's got these kind of cool features, but let's really talk about it in detail. Let's compare this, first of all, to the Santa Cruz. Now, first of all, this one tows 4,000 pounds with the 4K tow package. Clearly labeled, great marketing. 4K, 4,000 pound tow package. The Santa Cruz actually tows more. So on a spec sheet, you could say, hey, the Santa Cruz outdoes this. It also has, the Santa Cruz has load leveling rear suspension where this doesn't have that. However, I think Ford really understands that nobody's towing 5,000 pounds with this. You're just not. 4,000 pounds allows you to tow a 3,000 pound trailer without any issues, and they equip it from the factory ready to do that. First of all, you can see the license plate is off to the side here. Santa Cruz has a license plate in the center, and the Santa Cruz, when they put the hitch on, doesn't really mount to the frame like this does, which is solidly mounted to the frame. It's an accessory hitch that drops down lower, and if you look at it from the side, it kind of looks like this buck tooth coming out the side. It clearly looks like an add-on, and it's not my favorite thing. Now, when I had to get a trailer tow package for the Santa Cruz, there is no available trailer brake controller. This one does have that, and they put the wiring for it right here. You've got your seven pin wiring there with your trailer brake controller, all your power lines, and your four pin wiring right there. It's all frame mounted in the center, high up off the ground. It's part of the truck. It was designed into the truck. So while this doesn't tow as much as the Santa Cruz, it still tows quite a bit. Let's talk about the bed now. First of all, it's low to the ground. It's easy to get into. That's a big selling feature. Santa Cruz has a bed here. Now this one has been uh, Linex coated. You can get it coated from the factory. You can do it aftermarket. Uh, on the Santa Cruz, it is a plastic bed. Plastic bed in the Santa Cruz gives you a trunk underneath here. That's a winning thing. That's a great thing for a trunk. Now in Canada, you can only get the Santa Cruz with the turbo and you can only get the Santa Cruz with the hard tonneau cover that covers here. The hard tonneau cover is okay, but it does take up some space down here. And when I bought the Santa Cruz, it had some rails in the side here and I couldn't tell if you could add pieces to those rails or not, and nobody at Hyundai could tell me. They hadn't thought through if you could put something on the rails up here across uh, that could carry weight. They talked about this carrying weight, the hard piece carrying weight there. Ford went a different direction. They didn't put a hard tunnel cover on. In fact, they didn't put any hard tunnel cover on. They know that Ford has a huge accessories aftermarket, whether it's Ford accessories or aftermarket accessories that fit their trucks. And they knew that their aftermarket components would come in and be able to put covers on here. So they did that. But here's the other cool thing. I have a cheat sheet. We're gonna show you closer to the bed. In fact, let's bring you closer into the bed as we talk about this more. So I mentioned that I have a cheat sheet. What I want you to focus on right here is this QR code. Now I'm gonna put the QR code on screen for you right now so you can see what that QR code is. It's the FlexBed QR code. That will take you to a website that will allow you to take accessories. On my Santa Cruz, if you wanted to tow uh, or take your bicycles along, what they'll do, I went on the Santa Cruz, uh, the Hyundai site this morning, Hyundai Canada, and for cross rails that go onto the top of the uh, cab, $895.52 for the cross rails, tax not included. And then you have to get the bike holder for $461.60. That's what Hyundai says you should do if you wanna carry bikes. You know what Ford says if you wanna carry bikes? Scan the QR code, go to the lumber store, buy some lumber, fit it in there, and make your own bike rack that fits in the bed. Ford gives you, on this QR code, an information site to allow you to build for yourself all kinds of accessories that fit into the bed. Now, if you think about the small truck market and wanting to save a little money and do things yourself and make things simple, that is a fantastic idea. Let's come closer still and look at a few other features in here. So you've got your typical pickup trucks type stuff with the tie downs in here. There's tie downs through everywhere. This one's been, uh, you know, Linex coated here because it's an aftermarket coating. But right here is a 12 volt DC. That's what it says, flex bed 12 volt DC. This is not a 12 volt port. 
This is just 12 volt lines and it's on both sides of the bed here. What that does is allow you to get accessories as well. Whether you need in-bed lighting, whether you need a 12 volt port or whether you need something else, it gives you the 12 volt line there and allows you to decide what you're going to do with it. So you can get a Ford accessory, but you can also tap into it yourself to do your own lighting, to do your own types of stuff. So again, how do you save some money? You don't spend, you know, $1,300 plus, $1,357.12 of getting your own bike in there. You put your own bike rack in. You put your own 12 volt accessories in, whether that's lighting or anything else, and you put your own tonneau covers on yourself. So again, Ford's answering the question that the customers were asking. I want something less expensive. I want something that's usable. I want something that's simple, and I want something I can do some things on my own. Well, here you have that. Let's check out the back seats now. All right, as we head towards the back seat, let's just take a quick look at this. Of course, different design than a typical pickup truck. Again, the Santa Cruz and this sort of share this. This is a one piece body and uh, you know, it comes, there's no separate uh, split there, but they do have that very traditional look. A lot of trucks that have gone with the one piece design, like the Santa Cruz, like the previous Ridgeline, have had trouble creating that square type look over here to get the strength that they need. This one does it, it is what it is. And again, the Honda Ridgeline, the current one does that as well. Over here, because it's the XL model, you do have the black black door handles on the uh, gray paint, the black plastic door handles. And again, this is not a high-end vehicle. This is an LX trim, or sorry, XL trim, boy, XL trim. Uh, but you do have quite nice features in here. So again, blue doors here, that's just the color choice that they've gone with. So there's the blue and the gray. You've got some design details in here and you've got a lot of uniqueness in here. Sort of that, you know, kind of cool little shapes in there, it's different style door handles, but you do have, even on the base level, the padded armrest, which is kind of nice. A lot of lower end base level type vehicles don't have that padded armrest. You've got a pretty unique bottle holder there that fits fairly good sized bottles in there. Lots of extra space down there. So good door pocket space. I'm gonna knock them a little bit. They should have a pocket on the driver's side. They don't. They do have a pocket on the passenger side here, but then you have a 12 volt port down here, and then you have something else that's really cool below it. That looks like something's missing. Well, this is another cool thing about the Maverick. Again, Ford understands their market. You may want to have a cell phone holder back here. You may want to have a little garbage bin. You may want to have cup holders back here. You can 3D print your own things to fit into a slot like this and that kind of thing. So there are a whole list of accessories that Ford has given you 3D printing instructions for, so you can put accessories in here all by yourself, whatever you want. Now, if you don't want to make them yourself or you don't have a 3D printer, there's like a whole marketplace on Etsy and other things where you can get stuff. Of course, Ford also has accessories for there, but you could make your own things yourself, which is pretty cool, and that can save you some money if that's what you want to do. All right, let's jump into this vehicle now. We're going to flip the camera around and show you what it looks like for me as a six-footer to sit behind myself as a six-footer. So let's be really clear. Technically, the Santa Cruz says that it has more legroom. Now, both of that and this vehicle are going to be tight on legroom. Having said that, I used to own a uh, Chev, Co Col bleh, Chev Colorado crew cab, and it was also very similar in legroom here. So you actually have pretty similar legroom to at least uh, previous generation, but probably current generation um, uh, uh, medium-sized trucks or mid-sized trucks. So back here, fairly impressive. I have enough of an ankle on my angle on my back here that I'm comfortable. I have a headrest here and you know with no sloping roof line like you have in some sedans. I've got tons of space above my head as you can see here. I can hit my head back on the headrest without running into the roof because of the square roof line here. So overall space in the back is just fine. I'm a six footer sitting in a seat with my legs flush to the seat with plenty of legroom here and plenty of space to put work boots on and have my toes still slide underneath the seat in front. Ford knows what they're doing here. It's not massive, but it fits the kinds of people, the types of people you're gonna put in the back here. Kids, no problem. Uh, adults like myself, six foot, even taller than six feet, they still foot fit behind a six footer. So good space back here, I'm overall Pretty impressed with this. I thought it was gonna be a little bit less uh, spacious than it is. It's pretty good. Now let's go to the front seat. So before we jump in the front seat, let's just talk really briefly about what the key looks like and talk about the trim line we're looking at. So this is the key and it is an actual key. You can get, um, you can get the um, regular keyless entry version in the higher trim levels and that's why it's important to point out that this is a lower trim level. At the lower trim level, I think Ford does a really good job with the option packages. There's one option missing from this truck that I think it absolutely should have that it doesn't, um, that I think should come available on the XL that it's not. Uh, but other than that, we're gonna talk about that. So if you get this in the fully top trim spec, 
then you should definitely be looking at the Santa Cruz as well, because I think there's a, a market there that you should understand what you can get in the interior of a vehicle like this. However, for those looking for the question that, you know, has been asked, which is a low cost vehicle that does what you need it to do, uh, decent fuel efficiency, that kind of thing, this one really does well. So we're gonna go full wide angle. It's gonna skew the view just a little bit here. We have the same type of door pockets here. You got the padded armrest here. You got a big water bottle holder there, lots of spaces down there. The kind of unique kind of feeling there on the uh, door, door area. And again, this is all hard plastic, but where you're actually putting your arms, even on this XL trim is soft. Now, we talked about a trailer brake controller. If you are serious about towing, you need to have a hitch that's mounted to the frame like you're supposed to, and you need to have a trailer brake controller mounted to the vehicle, factory option, and there it is. Super, super simple. Even on the XL model here, you have that. Overall, the seats are gonna be really comfortable. I'll show you that in a second. They're manual seats because it's a lower trim level car. There are some differences in the center here, which some truck people may have to get used to, but it functions just fine. Let's jump in and go wide angle now and we'll uh, show you what we've got. All right, one thing I haven't done, which I'm gonna to try to do with the camera in my hand, I believe this is tilt and telescopic steering wheel, so it absolutely is. Tilt and telescopic, so I'm gonna push it in just for my video, which is not where I would have it seated when I'm driving. I would usually pull it out towards me, uh, but that's sort of what's gonna work here. I go back to wide angle there, there we go. All right, let me just hold my sleeve up for a second there. Okay, let's start the car again. This is a keyed car because it is the XL trim line, so I think that works just fine for, uh, what we're talking about here. Start it right up here. Ford's typical ding, 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 which I personally don't uh, like very much. I think it's uh, a little annoying, but uh, we'll turn the climate control off for a second. And you've got the seats in here. Now the seat will eventually tell me if I start to drive that my seat belt is not buckled. Let's just plug it in and we'll do that. And then you have that uh, check mark in there. So all four outside seats, not the center seat, but the outside seats will tell you that the seat belt is in. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, even on this XL. So typical XL stuff here, nothing fancy in the dash. You've got a speedometer, you've got a tachometer, you've got the uh, temperature gauge and the fuel gauge down low. That's really all you need. Nothing too fancy here, but inside this dash, you do have a number of things that are kind of nice. You do have a digital dash, which you can cycle through. So uh, we can go through all kinds of basic things. We've got this radio system there, phone connection, uh, some settings for the vehicle. Again, nice uh, display there, good accurate vehicle depiction. Uh, distance or kilometer still empty, and you can cycle through some of those uh, options there. There's menu items in there as well, pretty basic stuff. Over here is something that's interesting to me. On the Santa Cruz, this appears to be tilted, the screen appears to be tilted up. On this one, it almost appears, because it's so square, it almost appears like it's tilted down. Now, it is going to help you with, um, uh, it is going to help you with uh, visibility. I was cy cycling through the settings and never got back there. It is gonna help with some glare on there, I think. Uh, filming a screen always makes it look like it has more glare than it does in person. And you can see my hand kind of reflecting up there. But again, you can see there's really no glare reflecting in here. Let's throw in reverse for a quick second. We're gonna show you the camera. Again, typical camera stuff. You're gonna line your hitch up with that uh, right there if you're hitching something up. And of course, you're just gonna drop it down like that and look straight out the bumper to see your actual hitch when it's attached. So easy, easy to do backup camera. Again, nothing fancy here. It is a little weird that they have this screen where they have the ability to go larger. And even on the top trims, they don't go to a larger screen. You know, it is what it is, but again, we're talking about the economical version here, and I think this works well. Coming down here, even on the XL, what's cool is you have automatic climate control. So you can see the automatic climate control with three different levels of automatic. So they do this in a number of cars. Basically, if you turn this down like that, it will never go to a full max fan speed. And that just keeps it a little quieter. It keeps that cool air off you when the air conditioning is blasting or the hot air. So I kind of like that system. We can explain it a little bit better if you need to. Just ask me in the comment section if you need uh, better explanation. But it is an automatic climate control. So you set the temperature, you put it on auto, and you forget it. You want it 21 degrees in here, winter, summer, whatever. There you go. You've got that. Now down here, you've got um, the USB-C and USB-A plugs down there. There's a 12-volt port in there as well. And you can set a phone here. You can set a phone there. You can set stuff in there. This is a little bit rubbery type plastic. So it is still plasticky, but it's a little bit more grippy. The gear shift is going to be something that's not everybody's favorite. Uh, it works fine. What I find weird about it is when I put it to park, you watch, just watch my fingers. I won't lift them here. I can go to park, but I can continue to turn. 
And that seems a little weird to me. I feel like park should have a, a solid feel when I get there, but it works fine. Low range gearing is in there. Electronic parking brake is down here. You've got drive mode. We'll show you them in a second. That's your traction control, which is kind of an interesting uh, depiction. This car can turn itself off at stoplights. You can cancel that if you want. And because it has an electronic parking brake, you can set this up so when you release the brake, the car doesn't creep forward. It'll keep that parking brake on. Uh, so when you do that, you can um, hit this if you want. Uh, cup holders in here, again, the ability to 3D print some stuff on this accessories is kind of a cool thing to do. But overall, not a whole lot going on. Let's go wide angle. Again, this is an XL model. We're going to show you those drive modes in a second. We're going to show you something else. One thing I want to point out compared to the Santa Cruz, visibility is excellent forward, similar on Santa Cruz, but better back here. You have a little bit more visibility out the back window. The Santa Cruz has that sloped tailgate line. So looking at that back window between the headrest and the pillar there, right through the center of your screen right there is a little bit less um, less good visibility. And the vehicle I had had a 360 camera, which made backing up easier, but you needed the camera. Whereas here, I feel like you could back out, up without the camera. All right, we've talked about drive mode. Let's just zip in here. Uh, we'll zoom in. Actually, let's, let's zoom right in tight. Okay, so we're gonna cycle through those drive modes right now to that screen here. You have your normal mode, you have your tow haul mode. Again, set up from the factory to do a tow haul mode. Slippery, so snow, whatever you want. Eco, which if you're driving economically anyways, this works. If you're not driving economically, it's gonna kind of work against you with its shift points and that kind of thing. And then sport mode, same idea. It's gonna be worse for fuel efficiency, but if you're driving athletically, it's gonna keep it in the gear, hold the gears a little bit longer. So again, fully set up for what you're going to do with this vehicle, and I'm really impressed with that. Let's just flip the camera around and show you what I look like. All right, driving position here is excellent. I'm a little bit more square, so my legs come out here and go straight down, which is kind of that truck type feel. Now, if you've come from something like a Toyota Tacoma or a Honda Civic, your knee bend is a little bit more out. Whereas here, again, we'll look down again, so my knees would be a little bit more out in those vehicles. They're down here, and that works very well. The seating position is very comfortable. It doesn't feel like a luxury car in here, but I don't think anybody's trying to make it feel like that. The tilt telescopic steering wheel matters. I would move it a little bit closer to me. I just, like I said, moved it out for filming. But driving position is very good. Visibility is very good. This is one of those vehicles that, again, it's earned its position because it's kind of what people were asking for. I can see the hood. I can see out of it. I can drive it normal it's it's simple it's squared off so you know exactly where the corners of the vehicle are it's a good place to be to sit the one problem this car has in the xl trim is even though it has something like the trailer brake controller so i could take my camping trailer and drive across the country it does not have cruise control available on the xl model I feel like that's a mistake. If you're putting a trailer brake controller in, you know, sure, people just, you know, zip around town, but they're also going to take their campers. And I feel like the, if the XL model offered that cruise control, that would really be a good value. But I guess they want to bump you up trim lines and, you know, you can't fault them, I guess, for that strategy. I guess they've made some sense there. Let's jump outside the vehicle and talk about a number of things that really matter and what it would take to get me to buy this vehicle. So let's begin to summarize some of this vehicle compared to the Santa Cruz, especially, and then on its own. So compared to the Santa Cruz, my Santa Cruz had 20 inch rims. You can't get that on the uh, vehicle like this. However, they are handsome. They work off road because they have a taller sidewall. And I think that makes sense. Overall styling, whether you get this trim, which is the more XL, more base model trim, or whether you get the high end trim, it really kind of looks similar. Yes, there's different wheels, but that bodywork doesn't look super sporty. I don't know that that matters to the intended buyer here. What you have here is something that people were asking for. It's inexpensive to buy for the most part. It's smaller to park, to drive, to maneuver, and that works well. Where I think there's a mistake, and I think everybody kind of agrees for this, is that hybrid model, if you could make that hybrid model with an all-wheel drive, I think a lot of people would want that. And again, I kind of understand why Ford hasn't done that yet because they're having trouble producing enough hybrid models for just the front wheel drive crowd. And that makes sense. But I can see that coming down the line. Now the Santa Cruz is a vehicle that I had. Like I said, it does a lot of things well. When we talked about the bed of the Santa Cruz, um, we talked about that load leveling suspension that this doesn't have. The Santa Cruz actually had more carrying capacity than my crew cab Chevrolet Colorado long box, which was crazy. So the Santa Cruz can carry the weight. The problem is you couldn't carry all of it in the bed. What Ford did when they launched the Maverick is they stuck pretty much, you know, on the press release, they stuck, and you'll find the videos of it, all the weight you could handle in the back of this bed. They stuck basically the full, you know, whatever it was, thousand pounds or whatever that this bed could hold. So the point is you can do truck things with this and that's what Ford wanted to promote. 
This is a truck that can do truck things, but gets you car fuel efficiency and car maneuverability. That's a real key piece. So here's the overall summary that I have about this vehicle. I think you could absolutely make the case that the Santa Cruz is a better vehicle. It has better features in various ways and you know there's no issue making the case. This one has earned its role as a bestseller because when you make a technically great vehicle but you don't answer the question that the market wants, they don't buy it. And I think the Santa Cruz is in danger of maybe not having a second generation where I think the Maverick is absolutely due for a second generation. What will it take for me to buy a Maverick in my second generation? Well, I should be clear, one of the reasons I sold my Santa Cruz is in part because it was in crazy high demand and I could get a great price for it, but I ended up buying a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle happens to be a Jeep Wrangler uh, and I think that's a really good combination for me. That Jeep Wrangler runs on electric for most of my driving and what I think Ford needs to do is not just in the next generation, not just make this a hybrid with all-wheel drive, make it a plug-in hybrid with all-wheel drive. Give it a 3,500 pound towing capacity, give it decent power so I can do my around town driving on pure electric, keep the price in line. Ford's pretty good at keeping prices in line, especially with this vehicle. So you give me this exact vehicle, maybe a little refresh, cruise control, trailer brake controller, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle so I can do my around town driving on pure electric and drive across the country by just filling with fuel. Give me a similar size bed, a similar size cabin, don't make it crazy fancy. I don't need a crazy fancy. Just do what you're doing. Continue to give me those QR codes and those uh, ability to make uh, my own accessories inside with a uh, with a, a 3D printer. Ford's onto something. Ford absolutely deserves the top selling mark here. And again, this will continue in future generations. We don't know if that'll happen with the Santa Cruz. So if you want to know more about this car or other cars, do me a favor, like this video, comment below, tell me what you like about this video, what you like about these vehicles, Santa Cruz as well. And again, I want to be clear, I love the Santa Cruz. I think it's super cool. I think they answered a question of, let's create something unique and different. And there's a market to create something unique and different. Nobody wanted an electric SUV with Falcon wing doors that went as fast as a Lamborghini, but they created it. What's interesting though is the Model X that I just described from Tesla doesn't sell as well as the Model Y. That second generation has really been a great seller and Ford nailed it with their first generation. Nailing it with the second generation is going to be absolutely something they can do. Can Hyundai step up as well? So whether you wanna know about the Santa Cruz, whether you wanna know about the Maverick, let me know. If there's other cars, let me know in the comments. Let's continue the comments section here. Let's try to build out a little database of information. And I wanna thank everyone for watching. If you wanna see this vehicle, it's here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Canada's huggable car dealer. They will take care of you if you want to compare this to a whole bunch of other models. You can do that and you can get numbers from them where you're comparing apples to apples. It's absolutely the best place to buy a vehicle. I want to thank everybody for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.